satisfy your need for happiness through your own curiosity with the Ranveer Show. Did you come across this news in the US and I think in the UK where now children are getting diagnosed with measles and uh, they are getting measles related deaths now because of the anti-vaccine movement that is going on in the West. Uh, as in they're not even taking measles vaccines no. as a part of the anti-vaccine movement. Exactly. So it started off with the COVID vaccine and now it is spilled over into the other vaccines where these vaccines prevented <laughs> childhood death. Measles, mums, that is rubella, uh, diphtheria, tetanus and all of these. So this old world diseases are now making a comeback. So we are back to the hunter gatherer stage maybe in the next 10 or 20 years because if they don't vaccinate and uh, especially kids with these childhood uh, diseases we can prevent, we're going to see a lot of these old world diseases come back to us. What is the origin point of this thought of saying no to vaccines? Oh, that started off with the smallpox era. So at the time, so basically it's something to do with being going against the authority. So your government or some authority is saying, take it. So there are a group of people, why should you? Why should we listen to you? We don't want to take it. So any amount of information, uh, logic or reasoning that you give that particular group, they will not accept it because they're just looking at going, doing things against the authority because they feel stronger that way. So the- One layer deep, why? I think it's just, so this is something more important. It's known as the Bonhoeffer's theory of stupidity, right? So- uh, the more people are misinformed or the more they are illiterate from a health care point of view, the more they are, uh, you know, the more likely they are going to uh, fall for conspiracy theories. So I'm going to say that, you know, there is this new vaccine for smallpox. I mean, I'm talking about a smallpox era. So we discovered the new vaccine and now this prevents smallpox. So everybody take it. So some group will say that, you know, this is actually some company has made this and government is getting a cut out of it. And that is why they are giving this vaccine. That's conspiracy theory. And now this will reflect and uh, do well in groups where there is low health literacy, who will believe anything and everything because they have maybe poor education. They are not literate enough to understand consequences of these actions and they will just swallow this whole. Right. And there are these groups and these groups it again become bigger and bigger because you, I mean, if you ask me, uh, the theory also says that a small group of stupid people is much threatening than a single evil person. You know, if you have a very evil person, you know, take maybe Hitler, for example, you know, a small group of stupid people is more damaging than that guy. And because there was a lot of stupid people around evil people, evil people mm. were able to do evil things. Oh, damn. Right. So mm. this is the whole anti-vaccine movement. So there is this evil guy who has conspiracy theories in the head. And there are a lot of stupid people who will believe him. This keeps going on and on and becomes a movement. Yeah. I think the thing with conspiracy theories is that the human mind grasps it very fast because it's stories. Exactly. One layer deeper than what we're talking about is yeah. human psychology probably. That exactly. you're able to grasp exactly. stories much more than you're able to grasp data and facts. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and it's easier, which is why the process of education is important. It's very important. And, and, and it's not just education, because I see a lot of educated, I'm sorry, stupid people. Education does not mean intelligence, actually. And uh, I think it's all to do with critical thinking. So you have a problem in front of you, or I give you a problem in front of you. You must be able to analyze that problem in different angles and come mm -hmm. to a conclusion which is most logical. For example, I'm going to say that, you know, hepatitis B vaccination prevents hepatitis B infection. So you can ask me, how many of people will develop side effect against this vaccine? So I'm going to say, you know, maybe 100,000 people take the vaccine. One person could develop a side effect. So you'll say, you ask me, is that side effect going to be life-threatening? So I'll say, maybe it's life-threatening, maybe it's self-limited side effect. Then you'll say, what if I develop that side effect? You see how the way the thinking is going. So it's going into a negative conclusion already. So that person has decided that hepatitis B vaccination may harm him. Mm. But the truth is, it will protect him more than harming him. Mm. So the critical thinking will allow us to balance these two factors. So what is benefit-risk ratio? So something is more beneficial and less risky, rather than more risky and less beneficial, your mind should automatically conclude that something that is more beneficial and less risky is good for you. I want to talk about that one evil guy. Yeah. What do you, when, when it comes to anti-vaxxing as a concept, have you ever thought about where it originated? 
because there's another conspiracy theory attached to this okay. which says that if more people fall ill the pharma industry makes more money see i mean this is this is in a way uh, if you look at how medical science has evolved and why we have vaccines now why we have a lot of these drugs now which prevents diseases like tuberculosis we can cure tuberculosis now when it was killing millions centuries ago it's because of the pharma industry you know pharma industry we can look at it two ways you can look at it a glass half empty or you can look at it a glass half full mm. and people who love conspiracy theories will always look at it half empty you know uh, your rockefeller comes in your mm. soros comes in i mean everybody comes in and even simple doctors like me come into that picture you know we are all big pharma agents and working for it and we don't i don't get a single penny from them mm. and uh, what what this has happened is that see we need the pharmaceutical uh, industry because we want to produce medicines that are going to save lives and we want them to do research and produce new molecules that will save more lives in the future so just looking at pharma as a bad thing is i i i think it's it's not uh it's not uh, righteous to do that it's it's an inaccurate way to look at pharma because they are doing more good than the bad that little conspiracy bad that you are thinking that they're doing you know there there are bad pharmaceutical practices i'm i'm 100% i'm not denying it there was one where ranbaxy and i think you have you might have heard of this book called bottle of lies yeah. uh, uh written by katherine iban and uh, she actually showed that this person whom i uh, i mean i'm very good uh, friends with him uh, he's also a follower and friend on twitter uh, dinesh thakur he actually called out uh, ranbaxy for doing unethical trials in africa where they actually gave uh children and adults uh tablets which did not contain the drug but you know something like a chalk powder or something like that it did not contain the drug and then they made money out of it so he was a whistle blower and he took them to court i mean and they took him to court actually saying defamation suit and all but he won and the ranbax he just collapsed after that so there are ba- ethical bad ethical practices in the pharma industry 100% bad ethical practices among doctors 100% but that does not mean the medical science is bad mm-hmm. medical science is good it brings me to that avenger conversation we had at the start yeah. that we need more doctors on social media yes because when the average person gets to know you guys as human beings yeah. uh it'll sort out a lot i think what i read as the fear of doctors uh is again exactly what we were talking about conspiracy theory yeah. and the theory of negative biases yes. that one small bad person will actually you know uh, exactly. paint the picture exactly. for the whole industry but exactly. uh i think human beings generally need to understand more nuance which is what i enjoy about my job which i've understood is kind of the purpose of podcasting yeah. that we can have very long stretched out nuanced conversation, conversation rather than like you know yeah i mean just just putting it out there in a point i mean yeah. there is so many things around it if you enjoyed today's clip make sure you check out these curated playlists that we've made especially for you related to the subject that was spoken about in this clip